Azali Asumani preside over the destiny of our continent for the year 2023. This is truly an honor for the Comorian people. From the moment of his election, the president has been determined to carry African voice to the international stage. Following the footstep of his predecessors, the chairman of the African Union has pursued a global campaign to secure a permanent seat for the African Union at the G20. Africa will soon represent 1,300,000 inhabitants and have the largest share of strategic raw materials to power the economy of tomorrow. We are also about to become the world breadbasket. This is deeply unfair that we are not at the table of the global governance. The current chair of the African Union is also fighting for the reform of the Security Council the 1945 Global Security Act Charter has run out of steam. A new world order is in the making and Africa presence in all its diversity and particularly remain indispensable. Ladies and gentlemen, the African continent is facing multidimensional challenges. The place of women in decision-making bodies and the economic role of African women in our economies still need to be solidified. This is why our president fully supports the theme of this round table, activating the lever to unleash the economic power of women in Africa. The cost of living crisis has led to an increase in number of people suffering from hunger, energy insecurity, and economic instability. This is especially true for women who have more limited access than men to assets and income are even more economically vulnerable. Women are overrepresented to the lowest paid sector in some low income countries. The proportion of working women in the informal sector is high as 92%. They are therefore particularly vulnerable in time of recession. The African Union Agenda 2063 calls for at least 25% of public contracts to be awarded to women-owned business. However, women are awarded fewer than 1% of public contracts today. Even in time of peace, women around the world face food insecurity more often than men. In time of conflict and crisis, gender inequality means that women and girls often eat less and last, and the nutritional needs can be neglected. Extracting hunger, uh, exacerbating hunger, malnutrition, and poverty. The multiple crises affecting the continent will continue to put pressure on agriculture and critical food supply chains, leading to devastating impact on women's food security. The gender gap in food security, for example, increased between 2018 and 2022. Women's economic empowerment is essential for faster and more equitable economy recovery on the continent. It is also fundamental to the achievement of gender equality, women empowerment. Investing in women economic empowerment is not only moral imperative, it's also a smart economic decision that generates economic and societal benefits across the board. In this area, our president has supported the creation of financing grants for entrepreneurship with the aim of ensuring that proportion of the funding go to projects led by women. If women were to participate as much in the economy as men, this could add up to 26% annual GDP by 2025 in developing countries. Also, there are promising initiatives for women in economic recovery in Africa, such as financing, credit program, cash transfer, food aid, support for women's groups and entrepreneurial networks, coverage of the program and policy remain low. And it's imperative to make our policy more gender responsive and better targeted so that women and girls can more easily benefit from them and to strengthen their ability to cope with future crises and shocks. 
the African Union has declared 22 2023-30, the decade of financial economy inclusion for African women. In particular, this initiative aimed to accelerate the implementation of the African continental free trade area with the aim of strengthening African competitiveness on the global stage, which should benefit from African women in particular. However, if we were to truly transform Bayes' norms and reduce the gender inequality, that arise from them, we also need to look at the deeper cause of inequality than economic empowerment and tackle them directly. The unequal distribution of unpaid domestic tasks is a case in point holding back progress in this area. As the health strategy moves towards reconstruction in post-pandemic environment, there is a need to focus on strengthening health system as a whole, integrating gender equity and equality, equality across the board. Women in Africa face significant health inequality due to a variety of factors, including poverty, lack of access to health care, and cultural and societal discrimination. These inequality can lead to higher rates of maternal mortality, HIV, AIDS, cervical cancer, and other disease and limit the opportunity for education and economic emancipation, with a consequent impact on their country economic growth. In this area, our president has drawn on our own funds to set up a 600-bed university referral hospital with a particular focus on the care of women, especially in the case of disease such as cancer, which disproportionately affect women in Comoros. Maternal mortality rates in Africa are among the highest in the world, with the women in sub-Saharan Africa at risk of dying from pregnancy-related cause in proportion of one in 37. By comparison, the risk is one in 4,900 in high-income countries. The progress that has been made to strengthen health system in Africa is significant but remains fragile. According to the World Health Research, suggests that even a small reduction in the availability of maternal health services around 10 to 20 percent could result of up to 12, 200 additional maternal deaths over a period of just six months in low and middle income countries. Action is therefore needed to mitigate the impact of overlapping health crisis on women and the girl access to sexual and reproductive health services in order to avoid avoidable maternal and infant death. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, by implementing the digital transformation strategy for Africa 2020-2030, we can unleash the economic power that African women have and which the continent depends if we wish to see sustainable and equitable growth in line with the objective of the African Agenda 2063. Africa women want access to better financial services and the capability they need to use new technology to increase their productivity, particularly in rural areas. By investing more in the human capital, we can build a stronger economy that can better protect African citizens from future shock. This will include deploying digital tools and expanding the range of financial services available to low-income earners and those not served by traditional financial system, as in the case of for many women in Africa. By investing in the human capital of women in Africa, we can trigger economically transformative change in vocational and higher education skills enhancement and employment reduction program, as well as in overall workforce development competitiveness. This is my last paragraph. We must leverage the digital <laughs> revolution by developing and deploying new digital public goods and digital financial services for unbanked. So let me finish by quote with the, the, the great Malian thinker Amadou Hampateba. Amadou Hampateba said, for all what I know, I owe twice to my mother and once to my father. Thank you. <laughs>